good morning students so in the last class we discussed about power sharing amongst different organs of the government that is legislature executive and judiciary so in today's class we will be discussing about power sharing among different levels of the government now let's try and understand it with uh, the example of india it will be easier for you so you have in india you have three levels of government basically you have one union government that is your central government the main government right then you have the state government the various state governments the various governments on the state level then you have further within the state government you have the local government which consists of panchayat in the rural areas and nagar palika in the urban areas right now how does this happen what is this known as how does this takes place what is this arrangement known as see a general government is there for the entire country and then there is a government at the regional level that is a state level that is a provincial level regional state provincial are similar terms okay so such a government that arrangement of government where there is a division of power between the central government and the regional government central government and the state government is known as federal division of power federal government okay now in india we refer to it as the central or the union government okay now we, in the union government who's the leader this basically consists of your parliament the indian parliament where there is lok sabha and rajya sabha the two houses along with that you have your president your prime minister your council of ministers your member of parliament all are a part of the union government they sit there in the parliament okay i'm trying to make you understand in the easiest way possible so that you get the concept of it okay then you have the state government so the governments at the provincial level the governments at the state level they have different names in different countries for example in india it is known as the state governments then you take for example in other country such as in switzerland it is known as cantons okay so this system is not followed in all the countries there are many countries where there are no provincial governments at all but in those countries like our where there are different levels of government the constitution lays down the powers of the different levels of government and this is what happened in belgium and in sri lanka that is that division is known as federal division of federal division of power the same principle is there with the levels of the government which are below the state government such as here after the state government there is a local government as i explained you earlier rural areas panchayat urban areas nagar palika okay so this is how the levels of the government shares the power clear let's go on to your third version here that is among different social groups how power sharing takes place among different social groups such as the religious groups and linguistic groups now what are religious groups religious groups are the ones that that follow specific beliefs specific practices and they are generally small but they have their origins all over the world such as you have the practice of buddhism christianity islam jainism hinduism sikhism etc all over the world but they have their specific groups that is working everywhere for the propagation of their practices preachings okay such groups are your religious groups then you have linguistic groups 
these groups they come together for the development for the promotion of a particular language they focus on the language on the promotion on the development of a language okay and that is why if you remember the example of a community government community government in belgium that came up that is was the example of linguistic groups giving importance to the language and that is why the people of uh, belgium the people of sri lanka in belgium dutch and french in sri lanka you had sinhala and the tamil so it was a language issue with majority and minority right so in some countries there are certain constitutional and legal arrangements where socially weaker sections where women basically then are represented in legislatures and administration in india there is a concept of reserved constituency reserved constituency are basically those constituencies in which people only belonging to a certain group can contest elections for example these groups are scheduled caste scheduled tribes women in india okay so that is how this type of arrangement is basically meant to give space to give recognition to give representation in the government and in the administration to different social groups who otherwise they would feel alienated from the government and this is how the minorities are given fair chance to compete in the election to be a part of the decision making to to feel involved in the democratic politics and that is how democracy is strengthened when you involve each and every one regardless of the fact that they are in majority or in minority you give fair representation to everyone and that is how you share your power okay after that we also have another form that is power sharing arrangements that is seen in the way political parties pressure groups and movements they control or they influence those who are in power now in a democracy it's very important to understand what is political parties what are pressure groups and movements now to understand these there is always a confusion between political parties and pressure groups so who are basically political parties and pressure groups see usually when we always try to understand these two terms the major difference between political parties and pressure groups is that pressure groups do not contest elections they do not fight for power for the chair whereas political parties they contest election they come forward only they form they form themselves only with the agenda that they will contest elections okay now in a democracy people must have freedom to choose among the various contenders for power that is a sole right isn't it right to vote so in present democracies if you see this form of competition among different parties this takes a form of competition among different parties and such a competition ensures that power should not remain in one hand power should be shared now in the long run if you see power is shared among different political parties that have different ideologies and we all get moved by that only don't we and this sharing of power among the different political parties this may be direct when two or more parties form alliance and if the alliance if their alliance is elected they will form a coalition government and thus they will share the power what happened in maharashtra before right 
when your ideologies are similar when you share the power when you want to win the election but somehow you fall off with the numbers so you form an alliance and then you come forward with a coalition government and thus you share the power okay so i'll stop here for the day you will revise again the whole chapter till here we will continue in the next class again with political parties pressure groups and movements where i will be also explaining you how political parties and pressure groups they come forward to contest election what is a coalition government and all these terms okay till then do your assignments and let me know if you have any problem okay thank you students